Good afternoon, one and all. A warm welcome in a day four, uh, day three, four session of EFDP and ESTP. I, Mr. Sandeep Purkar, heart from Sir Dr. M. S. Gosavi College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, heartily welcome today's speaker, Dr. Prashant Kharkar, Professor of ICT. Sir completed their B farm from NMAP Samaj College of Pharmacy Nasik in 1998, MPharm from Institute of Chemical Technology ICT Mumbai in 2000, PhD from ICT Mumbai in 2004. He has completed their postdoctorate from Eugene Apollon College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, Wayne State University, Detroit, USA in 2009. Sir has experience in uh, taughting the courses of undergraduate like pharmaceutical organic chemistry first second third medicinal chemistry one two three then pharmaceutical analysis one pharmaceutical anal analytical approaches three drug regulatory affairs etc sir handle around 14 consultancy projects uh, around 11 research projects are sanctioned on various topics like lead optimization agrochemical formulation, bio-inspired drug story, etc. Published around 77 research papers in various national and international journals. Around 7 patents to his credit for potassium salt of 2-methoxy-4-vinylphenol anti-cancer compounds, compound for coronavirus infections. Sir is a, having the professional membership of UDCT Alumni, Alumni Association, Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India, APTI, Registered Patent Agent, American Chemical Society, Indian Chemical Society, Maharashtra Academy of Science, etc. In achievements, uh, fellowship of uh, elected as a life fellow in Indian Chemical Society in December 2021. Sir is a registered patent agent in Indian Patent Office uh, since March 2019. Sir has got Best Researcher of the Year Award in 2017 and 18 at the University Level uh, Award, which is given during the national annual, sorry, annual convocation for the Best Research Output during the previous academic year, August 2018. Sir has received the DST for Foreign Travel Grant for presenting the research work at Jordan Research Conference on Computer Aided Drug Design, West Dover, USA, in July 2017. Received the best poster award in international conference organized by the University of Mauritius. Sir also <clears throat> received All India Rank 1 in GATE 1998. I heartily welcome Dr. Prashant Karkar, sir. Thank you so much. Sir is going to talk on the topic of the art of writing the manuscript and other technical documents. Uh, it's overview tips and tricks. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. So now I can share my uh, screen, right? Okay. Um, okay. Perfect. Um, the title is slightly different, but it's in, it's, uh, the main essence is still the same. Uh, effective manuscript writing and the same uh, tips and trick can also be applicable to uh, other technical documents including patents or uh, you know any white papers or anything for that matter okay now as far as um, the topic is concerned i have been uh, talking on this topic for quite some time so that's what i thought maybe this time i'll do it slightly different uh, slightly uh, you know differently of course, I have this presentation and I'm going to uh, use this presentation for a few minutes. Uh, I mean, for, I mean, in between a few minutes, uh, my other uh, uh, document that I would want to show you. Um, and uh, I'm sure there were other um, uh, other speakers who kind of uh, spoke uh, on a related topic. So uh, that's what I thought, uh, you know, rather than just having this uh, conventional presentation, I would uh, actually talk about one of my uh, recent papers. Uh, which we got published in uh, a real good journal, Drug Development Research. And this is exactly where I would want to show that document first. But before I uh, do that, let me just uh, thank the organizers uh, of the talk and scientific community. 
whatever little i know in this field it's all because of um, uh, you know the effort i mean the the, the scientific I, i owe it to scientific community and uh, like i said uh, thank you organizers for giving me this opportunity to share my experience uh, here right so um, disclaimer uh, the views ideas and opinions uh, expressed uh, in this uh, talk are solely mine and uh, i don't know what happened okay uh, can the focus be on the slide presentation sir just a minute how do i maximize the uh, my presentation because i see is a small window and uh, okay yeah yeah this is this is better uh, let me first uh, get back to the present uh, the document which i would want to show you so um, okay so do i do remove from studio or uh, what the presentation the second screen visible okay so uh, i'm just going to talk about uh, a presentation uh, well a paper of mine i'm just struggling with this uh, thing i don't know as in you know you really have to help me uh, otherwise it's going to get just get delayed is it is it visible somebody should give me the, some response please pingal sir can somebody respond dr prashant let me just call okay um let me first uh, talk about this particular uh, paper that we have published recently uh, so somebody approached me um, dr San uh, sanjay kharnar and a friend of mine uh, dr valmi gavre they approached me for uh, some biology related work anti cancer activity work uh, so they they had a set of 20 molecules Uh, belonging to this particular series two phenyl substituted four amino or uh, six seven dihydrophyate cyclopenta d pyrimidines as anti glioblastoma uh, therapeutics uh, very well characterized uh, compounds so then uh, since we are already working on glioblastoma so i i requested uh, valmik to send the compound to us uh, he did send then the first thing that we did was we evaluated these compounds uh in the uh in the preliminary assay uh, where we screen uh, the compounds at 10 micromolar as well as 100 micromolar for uh, percent inhibition uh, that is the glioblastoma cell line only one cell line u87 mg and then eventually um, uh, those compounds which showed uh, 
very nice activity uh, meaning greater than 50 percent inhibition at the uh, at the 10 micromolar uh, concentration then we took it for uh, ic50 uh, evaluation and then uh, we got a nice data maybe i'll just show uh, show it to you okay Okay, so uh, table uh, three talks about the molecular structures or lists the molecular structures and percent inhibition data at 100 and 10, but uh, 10 micromolar is therapeutically more relevant concentration. So we uh, looked at uh, only 10 micromolar and out of this like five compounds, we evaluated the um, the IC50 and uh, all of these IC50 values were very close to 10 micromolar, which was good. Uh, I mean, these, if you look at the structures, they're not very big structures, very, uh, you know, they're tiny structures. So there is so much scope for further improvement. And uh, we were good uh, as far as these IC50 values were concerned, because this was cellular uh, data, uh, meaning cell-based uh, assay data. So then what we did was, um, because it was just one cell line and then only 20 compounds, although we had all the data on the structural aspects, so then we uh, further evaluated uh, these molecules in uh, some molecular uh, computation molecular modeling uh, investigations. So the first thing that we did was we looked at um, the uh, target prediction using uh, open source uh, software or tools like Swiss target prediction. And then we predicted uh, their targets. Uh, and then these molecules were eventually docked into these um, targets. Now these are all kinase targets. These are the PDB IDs if you see. And then eventually we presented all this data in a nice uh, manuscript and we connected the dots and this manuscript was communicated to drug uh, development and research. Uh, the impact factor is close to uh, close to five and uh, immediately it got accepted immediately as in, in the first shot it got accepted. Now you see only 20 compounds, one cell line, uh, of course, IC50 and uh, the percent inhibition data at uh, 10 uh, and 100 micromolar concentration. All we did was we added this additional uh, computer aided molecular design studies and that improved the value or rather the content uh, significantly. And because of which we got, uh, you know, this manuscript published. So again, uh, what I want to uh, emphasize is uh, no matter um, what kind of work which you have done, there is always a scope for uh, you know value addition in terms of uh, you know how how exact what additional studies that you could do and uh, then in that case uh, you know it can potentially qualify for a good journal. So if you look at uh, and I'll say I'll share this uh, I mean this is open access uh, publication. So if you look at uh, this particular um, uh, manuscript. Uh, so the Sanjay Karna, he was the one who synthesized this compound along with uh, his colleagues Vika, Vishwas Gaikwar, Sambhaji, uh, Sambhaji Patil, that's his guide, and Valmik is also uh, his colleague. He is currently at uh, Chandwad uh, uh, near, near Malega. My student Anjali, she, uh, she actually performed the uh, cell line studies and Rameshwar helped in the, um, uh, in the uh, molecular modeling studies or computer aided uh, molecular design studies and uh, everything we could put it in proper perspective. Now the best part was uh, the extensive uh, uh, structural characterization data which was um, the HPLC purity, then uh, 1H NMR, C13 NMR, then mass spectrometry as well as FTIR. So uh, everything, you know, uh, it, it was very nicely characterized and eventually we could uh, justify, uh, meaning of course we tested and then eventually this was packaged in one uh, manuscript. So again, what I want to tell you is when it comes to writing uh, impactful publications or um, in a way, uh, you know, so, so, so the, uh, these manuscripts which are likely to get accepted in uh, high impact journals. Uh, so again, uh, there is no uh, definitive recipe for the uh, for it except for the uh, technical content or the quality of the technical content even if uh, the kind of work may be small but if you put it in proper perspective you, uh, you know add your own insights it's likely to help you in uh, getting published in a uh, you know, highly uh, impactful journal and this is exactly what we did uh, so the first part if you look at different parts of this uh, particular um, uh, manuscript 
and the exactly same thing i'm going to talk about uh, like it's part of the presentation but uh, you know you would probably uh, receive it uh, in a better way if uh, if i give you an example like this then uh, you know what exactly needs to be done so the first and foremost uh, part of this uh, publication is the uh, title so here we are clearly mentioning although some journals may have uh, some limitation on the number of characters number of words or the length of the title but uh, drug development research drug development uh, research it does not have any um, uh, you know any such restriction so we actually uh, mentioned uh, you know title is little big but again you look at the way we have put it together hit discovery so again this is about hit discovery of novel now that word novel is also important and then the chemical series now this is important because when the papers see i am doing some literature search and i am looking for a particular say antiglioblastoma therapeutics or any topic of my interest then the first thing i will do is maybe in pubmed or in google search i will put those keywords uh, which i am looking for and this is exactly what you should be doing whenever you are uh, compiling the uh, title of the manuscript uh, the you know be it a review article or be it a research article you should include those key terms because then uh, your paper is likely to be found uh, you know uh, in a better way uh, by many those who are looking for and eventually you can get it published in uh, uh, meaning you can get it cited uh, in uh, in uh, you know in, in many searches right then uh, we are also talking about as potential antiglioblastoma therapy so the purpose i am mentioning and then what all uh, we have done design we have done design we have done synthesis we have done biological evaluation we have also done the computational screening so uh, the first and foremost tip i would like to give you is your title must be catchy now again don't make it too fancy but it should describe it should essentially describe what is all in there in your manuscript because many a times when you are looking uh, at some literature uh, so the first thing that you do is you look at look at the title you read the title and if the title is catchy then it is going to help you in terms of um, you know uh, getting found and then uh, the reader may be more interested just by looking at the title in reading the next part that is going to be the uh, abstract now again uh, many journals will have uh, their own uh, limitations in terms of limitation in the sense now limitation on the number of words or number of characters uh, but i i guess uh, for drug development research uh, and uh, there's nothing uh, like this so again the abstract is little uh, extensive so then uh, here we are talking about we are describing the problem first it's glioblastoma it's highly aggressive then we are talking about uh, this novel series uh, that gives an uh, the reader idea that it is a novel it's not reported and then what all we have done and then we just elaborate on uh, what was it like the individual components a design process followed by the synthesis followed by the testing and then summarizing all the salient features in terms of the results uh, right so then once i know uh, that like see i am as a third person i am reading this paper so i know there are six compounds which is shown ic50 less than 10 micromolar and that will further make me more interested in this particular manuscript and then i may be tempted to uh, read through the manuscript if not uh, the complete manuscript maybe the results and discussion part maybe the experimental part maybe only the results like that right and then uh, so so everything uh, what i have done is i have just elaborated based on what we have put in the title and what is in there uh, in, in that particular paper right so the second uh, important trick is your uh, abstract should be impactful it should not be too lengthy it should not be too uh, small but then at the same time you have to summarize all your uh, results or salient features uh, in that so that uh, anybody who is reading it for the first time uh, should get more interested in uh, reading your manuscript further and there is a likelihood that uh, you know the if the author gets interested in your manuscript then it is that person uh, will definitely uh, meaning uh, if the if that uh, if that person uh, is reading your paper abstract first title and then abstract and then the complete manuscript so then he or she is likely to cite your paper because uh, you know it's written nicely so again uh, so if you if you give a similar task to somebody else uh, say prashant murumka and for with the same results and uh, everything same now the the, the uh, you know uh, the way he will uh, compile the manuscript uh, will be very different than uh, the way i did right because everybody has their own style and uh, some people are uh, very you know they are re really good at uh, you know writing 
uh, then some people are really good at summarizing results and uh, you know visualization so you know what i'm saying is every person uh, the same data same manuscript you ask uh, them to write uh, then everybody will come uh, with their own uh, style and then uh, so so that's what every manuscript is unique and this is where it is it is actually an imprint of the author's thought process this is exactly what happens so um, uh, you know you can eventually develop your own style and uh, make uh, things uh, you know uh, in your work in your favor right but then like i said again eventually you will learn the next important thing is uh, keywords a lot of people do not regard keywords as uh, important but they are very very important what you put here uh, will be uh, you know somebody is searching and then eventually these keywords are picked up and your paper may be the uh, in the hit list uh, of somebody's uh, uh, search right then uh, i next important part is introduction now typically uh, i write the introduction part in the end right i don't really write in the beginning the first thing i do is i first compile the experimental uh, result because that's what uh, has that, that that's what has been done so first i will uh, write down all the synthesis part then characterization part then biology and then the computational part in the say in the logical order right and then uh, the next thing i would do is i will write the results and discussion part then finally i will write the uh, introduction part because uh, ultimately the essence of a good paper or the core strength of a good paper should be um, should be that uh, the flow should be maintained right so if you do it this way that you compile all the uh, you know all the experimental data experimental results discuss those results then your thought process in terms of how the flow should be maintained uh, you know because introduction is the first part so in that case in, in case of introduction the first thing that you should do is you should you must describe the problem right in the first paragraph and cite all the relevant references uh, particularly the latest references do not go like 10 years back or so you don't really have to uh, you know cite very very old references it's a good idea uh, you can cite some of the latest review articles which cite the older references so you don't have to what people have already uh, written in the latest review articles so typically when you do a literature search and write it in the paper as a part of the manuscript you should not go beyond three years right unless you want to cite some seminal results or some uh, you know groundbreaking research in that area otherwise it's always a good idea to stick to only three years uh, research right and then uh, you just go on uh, and then uh, typically if the problem is such that you have some statistics available then i would always uh, would want to uh, write the statistics say prevalence of a disease or a condition or even for that matter uh, you know if uh, there is some formulation uh, which or formulation technology which has appeared very recently then i would actually write about that and then uh, say how many products in the market belong to uh, you know or use this particular technology whatever whatever statistics is available that you should give then the next thing you should also talk about is um, you know once the um, so so the then then the next thing we should do is uh, talk about what has already been done so there is a problem what people uh, how people try to tackle that problem or how people try to solve that problem so and this is where you have to cite all the relevant references so it is possible that somebody who is working in the field an expert in the field uh, you know pay your paper may be referred to that person and if that person sees uh, that his paper is not cited which was published very recently then he is definitely going to go mad now again we don't know where the paper is going to go but it's always a good idea to make sure that uh, you cite all the relevant references right if there are too many references you can probably give it in the in the supplementary information or you can write the cross references of one particular reference but it's always a good idea right at the same time uh, you know it's it's a good idea to give some charts or figures now typically uh, you know figures should not be copied as such even though uh, because you need a permission to copy uh, these figures and put it in the in the in the manuscript uh, so typically i uh, i modify the figure and then i write adapted from this particular reference because this is where this is what you must do you must cite the uh, relevant reference from which the that particular figure is taken now here what i have done is chart one molecular structures of approved small molecule drugs and preclinical or clinical candidates for glioblastoma because that is what my problem is so i'm telling the reader that this is what it is 
and this is the this is the gap uh, in the present uh, whatever solutions which are available the molecules which are available and this is exactly what i have summarized in uh, the next few parag maybe next two paragraphs and then i'm talking about uh, what is uh, where the research in that particular field is going where is the gap where is the unmet medical need and why it is necessary that this work the work which i am presenting in this paper is uh, is in line with uh, say the unmet medical need or need of the hour so we, i have to convince so so this is like selling your own product you want you must convince you i mean this is it's it's like you are you are standing in a uh, in a market and you are trying to sell your product and this is exactly like that so you are trying to convince the reviewers you are trying to convince the editor that look this is what the problem is this is what we have done and uh, this is in line with what is to be done so uh, it is relevant to what is um, you know what is relevant Uh, meaning my work is uh, you know is, uh, my work is a significant contribution to the field because this is where the gap is and this is what uh, we are trying to fill that gap so you have to uh, convince the reader for that and that's where uh, it's a good idea to uh, you know uh, support it with literature some numbers some structures some schemes some figures right at least one figure per uh, section uh, say introduction one figure or, or maybe one table depends uh, because sometimes you may not have enough data for a table and this is exactly where uh, you you must um, uh, you must uh, talk about it and uh, towards the end of the introduction se uh, section you must uh, you know uh, write what you are presenting in the uh, current uh, manuscript so in the present study the design synthesis purification structural characterization computational studies this is exactly what has been presented why in an attempt to discover promising hit or hits which can then be taken up for subsequent lead discovery and optimizations so i am uh, modulating the thought process of the reader in uh, you know uh, in in believing that this work is really very important which it is and then uh, eventually uh, you know this is a significant contribution to the field right so introduction has to be written uh, in my opinion in the end because you know what results you have got you already have discussed uh, those results and this is exactly where um, you need to uh, uh, you know convince uh, the reader convince the um, editors reviewers everyone that this is uh, you know this is a really good piece of work and the maintaining the flow should be uh, you know it, it is one of the most important aspects wherein you are saying that uh, you have uh, you know uh, one paragraph and the second paragraph there has to be a connection they should not be completely off and this is where the re when we say readability of the article is increased that means uh, the article is written in such a way that there is a nice flow of information connect of one section to the other section and then summary of the results and everything is discussed properly right so introduction is very very important part and uh, typically in my opinion like again i'm reiterating it should be done in the end right but of course you can have your own uh, thought process where some people would want to write it in the beginning uh, because it comes first but doesn't matter it's uh, like i again said it's a uh, manuscript writing is an art or for that matter any technical document writing is an art and you just have to uh, you know uh, make sure that it's more readable it's uh, it's comprehensive and there is flow of information and uh, stuff like that okay the next thing i talk about is uh, the chemistry because this is again a design synthesis paper so i talk about chemistry then i give the uh, you know uh, the, the the synthesis synthetic scheme i list out all the uh, reagents now again uh, throughout the manuscript you must make sure that there are no uh, grammatical mistakes there are no punctuation uh, mistakes there are no typos because that can give a very bad impression on the reviewers on the editors i mean it's your baby and you must make sure that it is it, it looks the best uh, to those who are looking at it including the reviewers as well as editors right so you must be very very careful in writing follow the uh, journal style follow uh, the instructions for authors don't be so casual nowadays most of the journals they'll ask you to write it in the free form and after it is reviewed and um, in a way uh accepted uh, then they will ask you to put the references in the journal style or uh, you know something like that do the modifications and this is exactly what we should do typically you stick to the journal uh, instructions for authors if they are saying you write results separately discussion separately you must follow that or results discussion together 
then uh, you can actually write it the way journal the instructions for authors uh, talk about okay so then i am talking about the chemistry i am written i have not made any mistake in uh, writing the structures where that that can actually happen and then uh, all other information there are no typos uh, something like that the next thing uh, that i am talking about is materials and methods some of uh, in some papers it would be called as experimental so here i am first describing the computational study so you can make sections sub sections sub sub sections like that so in the first part i am talking about computational study the general aspects what was the computer used what was the software used what all i did and then uh, if there is additional information that you may have uh, it's a good idea to put it in the supplementary information section because uh, you know the journal space is very very important and you must uh, you know kind of preserve although most of the journals are online but it's always a good idea not to unnecessary really put uh, you know put the technical jargon or too much information in the paper because otherwise if it is too big paper or manuscript then uh, the reader may not be interested in reading so it's a good idea uh, to put the supplementary information now in our case uh, whenever we have any uh, manuscript like this where uh, design synthesis is reported we always put all the spectra all the information in the supplementary information of course the textual information is uh, textual information is included in the experimental section but all the spectra so that is the actual direct evidence so there is no ambiguity about the structural identity a lot of people do a lot of things but then uh, it's always a good idea to put all the data in the supplementary information you also have to remember that the supplementary information is actually freely available so uh, many people may not have subscription to that journal they may not be able to uh, you know see your paper but the data that you give in the supplementary information section including maybe some general procedures or some typical uh, you know procedures so then it becomes easy for them to refer and the chance that they will cite your paper uh, you know that is that becomes higher or that increases that's where uh, it's always a good idea to give a lot of supplementary information any of my papers you see we do not leave any stone any uh, any stone unturned we always put all the raw data also we have started putting raw data uh, as well so tomorrow if somebody has some uh, question some query the raw data is there there is no ambiguity right so you must uh, do that then the next uh, subsection is molecular docking so i describe in detail now again here you should uh, you should write it in a uh, you know, proper format uh, as if uh, you know somebody wants to repeat uh, the study based on your description he or she must be able to do it uh, there should not be any ambiguity meaning uh, when you are writing a chemical chemi uh, chemical synthesis procedure mention the quantities of reagents and write the procedure explicitly again that's a very very important a lot of people do not do that so if somebody reads a procedure and uh, the procedure is confusing maybe uh, you know uh, what you have done and you try to uh, write it but then somebody may not interpret the way uh, uh, you know uh, you want them to and that's where uh, many a times the, the the procedures wouldn't work and this happens many many times the synthetic procedures wouldn't work because the original authors were not careful in giving all the final details right so this is where you need to do a good job in terms of i mean it's, it's always a good idea whenever you do study you write down all the finer details in the lab notebook and just make sure that you use that information while writing the paper if you think there is too much of information like i again said you can always put it in the uh, supplementary information section and this is exactly what you should do so you do not uh, hide anything you do not uh, you know mix anything do not uh, confuse uh, the reader because if that is the case then they are not going to cite your paper okay then uh, after that uh, you know the next part was synthesis so exactly um, uh, so first part was computation and the second part was synthesis so here we are talking about uh, the individual uh, you know what nmr instrument was used what uh, ir or whatever what were the solvents and what how all, all the you know information are given now here you see uh, all the figures uh, all the spectra are given as figures s1 to s88 so total 88 figures are there including all the nmr spectra ir spectra c13 h1 uh, then uh, hplc and stuff like that right and then uh, say this is the first um, uh, first uh, molecule in that case or intermediate for that matter so i give all the uh, necessary information uh, in terms of the reagent quantities the molar equivalence 
and then uh, what all we did exclusive then you have the data melting point yield h1 nmr then you have got c13 nmr and then ir and then mass uh, and whatnot right so everything with interpretation this is very very uh, good information so we have done that for all of this so this is the general procedure for all the f1 to f20 compounds i have already given so you don't have to give the procedures again separately the same procedure for different different uh, compounds absolutely that's not necessary and this is where you can save some space if you want to give uh, more information you always use the supplementary information section because there is no limit on that because the supplementary information will only be published online and uh, not uh, anywhere else like you know uh, in, uh, not in the print media and this is where uh, you know things have uh, written then the next part was um, the biological evaluation uh, then again in biological evaluations we talk about what cell line where we have got it from and then how we processed it and all the further details as far as the biological uh, assays or biological procedures are concerned wherever it is necessary you can cite your own papers or previous papers or somebody else's papers and then here uh, again uh, it's a good idea to write down uh, the source materials from where uh, you have got this because uh, the same say 10% uh, FBS uh, you get it from some other company uh, you know it may not uh, it may have some impact on because these are complex uh, biological media it may have some impact on the assay results so it's always somebody wants to reproduce it it's a good idea that they better use a very similar um, grade of material then it becomes easy for them to repeat uh, the experiment so likewise everything is given then comes uh, the structures again uh, you cannot really make any mistake in the structures or whatever uh, information that you are giving any technical information you should you must not make uh, any mistake uh, and then we are giving all the data we are putting all the subscript uh, superscript whatever it is uh, and then uh, mentioning that as a footnote in the in the tables right so you are responsible for what is what goes on in that particular paper and this is where you must have good uh, titles for the tables and then uh, even the figure captions for that matter which are non ambiguous very clear uh, without getting uh, like too big or so uh, here i am saying table 3 molecular structures and percent innovation data of compounds f1 to f20 again gbm cell line right so then the the reader knows what to expect right and here uh, again you have to make sure now see typically any experiment you do ideally you are requested i mean you are supposed to uh, do it in uh, replicates say here yeah, at least replicate is necessary so you must apply uh, you know the uh, you, you must calculate the standard deviation the mean and the standard deviation so lower the standard deviation that means the result are in good agreement if the standard deviation is too high that means there is too much dispersion and that can actually have uh, uh, you know the reader may have some uh, you know some some question some query related to uh, the, the way the experiment was done so again this replicate uh, will always be a good idea in terms of uh, validating the result um, uh, you know uh, you know having the less spread or so right then uh, we also have done the uh, cytotoxicity data of the hits in the entity assay where we found out the ic50 value so initial uh, this initially the screening was done we selected the top six molecules and there, there should always be some kind of positive control uh, or negative control wherever it is applicable because uh, otherwise you will not know whether uh, the compound is inactive because the acid did not work or the compound is inactive because or compound is uh, yeah compound is inactive because it is not active meaning it, it did not show any activity so that's where you always must have control positive control negative control course we haven't written here but negative control is the, just the dmso and that is taken as the 100 percent uh, growth and uh, with reference to that all the percent innovation uh, cell uh, innovation data is eventually uh, normalized or calculated so i'm just talking about giving right there. then the next thing is again uh, you know mentioning the uh, you know uh, giving the graphical representation or visualization of the data because just by looking at the tables uh, where you have all the numbers uh, it will not be so impactful uh, compared to a visualization like a chart, a histogram, a line chart or whatever, whatever is the appropriate representation. Uh, but again, make sure you write down the write down the uh, proper units uh, and what that uh, assay, uh, I mean, what that axis is representing. You have to have proper scale. You can adjust the scales. Everything is done using Excel or any other uh, uh, software that you may have. Here we have added the error bars just so we know. Uh, whether the results the mean was really uh, diverse or so 
like that okay so uh, and then uh, here the, this next table is for the docking score so what we have done again here uh, for the uh, validation of the docking methodology so let's say like we have used uh, these three um, three crystal structures so all we are doing is the crystal structure bound ligands are also docked just to see that the docking whatever settings you have used that essentially reproduced uh, that docking score uh, meaning reproduce their docking pose and whatever is the score that you can always compare with uh, the molecules that you are and you are working with uh, so then again this is kind of positive control uh, you want to understand whether your docking uh, protocol docking algorithm was um, uh, reproducible in uh, you know reproducible in giving you the pose which is found in the x-ray structure of the original ligand then in that case uh, you know if you do so uh, if that is the case which which is the you know which which happens most of the times then uh, whatever uh, docking you are doing with your molecules that will also be in a way assured that uh, although here because these are tiny molecules the docking scores are less and this is exactly what you should know okay so having said that then the next one uh, like the 2d interaction diagrams of individual molecules along with the crystal structure bound pose uh, then you can directly compare visually uh, and then you can also include that in the um, uh, in the results and discussion part next comes uh, the results and discussion section which is i i'm sure it is the most difficult part in terms of writing because in case of experimental data you will write whatever uh, you have done uh, you will present the data in case of introduction you will actually get it from the literature and then you will express in your own words but results and discussion where you have to actually again this is uh, like i said this is the most difficult part where you have to convince the the reviewer convince the editor that these are these are the results that we have got and this is what we think it is in terms of discussing those results and trying to connect the dots so your results is an information and uh, your discussion is basically connecting those dots which eventually will um, uh, will appear convincing to the to the editor to the reviewer and this is what you should do but again here you have to support whatever you are saying uh, based on um, the literature literature may have a similar observation or something that you see is uh, anomalous or deviated uh, then in that case you can say this is what literature says but look this is what we have got and this could be the possible reason so again you have so what i'm saying is uh, why this is most difficult but because here you have to give you have to provide your own insight uh, in this particular uh, aspect and this is exactly uh, you know why it becomes more difficult because you have to write in your own words you have to appear more convincing and uh, you know as a student uh, they will write in their, own, in their own words and at times it's not very convincing and believe me uh, you will write this section very fast but this is not what it is uh, required you have to uh, you know uh, you have to deliberate you have to brainstorm on that and then eventually make sure uh, you, you do a Good job because uh, many reviewers like when I review papers the first thing I do is I go to the results and discussion section and from that I try to connect it with the abstract and the conclusions and based on that I will uh, make up my mind whether uh, if, uh, this guy should be doing the you know going up for going for major revision or, or this paper this manuscript should go for major revision minor revision or etc as it is it's very rare to have manuscripts which will be uh, you know uh, the best uh, I mean, of course, some journals which are really uh, high impact journals like uh, Science Translational Medicine or so 16 impact factor. I have reviewed a couple of papers for them previously, uh, but then those papers are also very crisp because if it is not, then the editor itself will uh, kind of reject it, right? Then I am uh, discussing uh, the individual uh, things, including the interaction of hits with uh, the, the targets that we selected, and these are the so nicely appearing uh, uh, diagrams which we have generated with the help of software uh, and this is where you have to you know appear convincing you have to see you have to say this is what i see and this is what i think it is and this is how uh, you know you should be interpreting and a uh, lot of different things then likewise um, so this uh, you know everything is done then uh, we have the conclusion now many people find it very uh, they'll just repeat what they have written in the abstract but then conclusions uh, they're not sub supposed to be the same as abstract but conclusions basically what you have what results you have got what you've discussed and what exactly uh, you think uh, you know the utility of this particular uh, work is and what is uh, and, and some some journals will ask you to write on future perspectives right or what next right so how these uh, the work which you have done 
is essentially very very interesting and it is contributing to the betterment of science or it is adding uh, to the um, you know knowledge of science or uh, scientific community which we already know so this is where if it is run of the mill work meaning uh, you know uh, not uh, really adding much value to to the science uh, then in that case the editor itself uh, himself uh, or herself may decide that this work is not worth uh, in even reviewing and they will just return it uh, right away then a conflict of interest you must uh, declare all the conflict of interest statement suppose if i publish a paper uh, along with a company where i am a consultant so i have to declare that uh, i am ethically bound to declare that uh, there is a conflict of interest uh, because i work with them uh, for fee uh, because of con like consultancy then data availability statement some uh, journals would want that the data that supports the findings of this study are available in the supplementary material of this uh, article and this is what I, i said so you give all the data that you have as a supplementary information let people uh, reproduce it let people see it let people question it uh, as long as you have done good work ethically sound integ integrity wise also sound then uh, you don't have uh, anything to fear uh, of anything right and then of course uh, the references so it's again a good idea to uh, look at the referencing side and my sincere advice do not get into um, i don't know uh, any of the uh, reference uh, citation uh, software some place you have the subscription and many a times like people use i nothing against mendeley uh, please don't get me wrong but then uh, i don't personally find mendeley uh that useful so i will write all my references uh, manually text sign but then i'm very very obsessive you you know i challenge you you show any uh, you know no, even one comma here and there or even semicolon here and there i will spend more, so much time in doing that so uh, i mean i'm just uh, uh, you know i come from that uh, that fraternity uh, where we used to send uh, articles for manuscripts for review Uh, in hard copy uh, i'm sure many of you don't even know what that means but anyways uh, what i'm trying to tell you is uh, it's a good idea to uh, to to have uh, all the references uh, arranged properly so it could be numbering it could be according to um, you know the, the alphabetical order whatever it is then uh, the supporting information so you have to mention what is in there and then how to cite the article this will be part of the production process they will put it okay so uh, the same uh, tips and tricks are uh, essentially useful for you to write any technical document now in in case of patents uh, it's pretty open ended meaning uh, of course you have to follow a certain uh, certain uh, you know certain style uh, when you are writing uh, a patent application be it uh, a provisional or a complete specification because a patent law insists you to do that there have to have some sections like that abstract on a separate page individual figures on a separate page but uh, you know when it comes to patent there is more uh, free hand uh, you know you can uh, you know there is no clear cut guideline whether you should uh, write everything or you should only write few things but typically because it's uh, you are getting a protection for disclosing your invention then in that case you should do a good job in uh, you know completing in, in writing uh, the patent application now many a times uh, people say that uh, in case of provisional application uh, you know you, you don't disclose much uh, you know and then uh, for complete specification you disclose everything but uh, you know if you talk to some patent experts uh, patent attorneys they'll say that it's always a good idea to include uh, all the data in the provisional application itself maybe you are doing another you are you are doing some work which will be uh, you know done uh, within a year's time where you are uh, where you must file the complete specification but it's always a good idea to include all the uh, all the information that you have at the time of filing provisional application because then it becomes a priority date so tomorrow you say uh, that Uh, you know you write a general procedure but you don't give data for one particular compound or you don't mention the chemotype and something like that then somebody may come up uh, with uh, a similar compound and then there will be um, infringement issue meaning you have done it previously but because you have not included it properly in the provisional application uh, you may not have that claim because everything will go meaning all these uh, proceeding infringement process proceedings will go by what you have written in your say uh, the first document that is provisional application or you just uh, file the complete specification in one go 
uh, claims must be written uh, very carefully you cannot uh, have claims of claims meaning you have may uh, the first claim has to be the primary uh, claim and then all uh, or independent claim and then uh, the remaining claims are dependent claims uh, dependent on one because what you claim uh, is going to give you the patent protection for so it's always a good idea to take help of some patent attorney or some patent agent and uh, do a good job in writing uh, the claims uh, because other things that you can write on your own uh, of the patent document patent application but uh, writing those claims uh, must be uh, consulted for uh, you can also write but uh, if you are not a patent attorney or patent agent uh, you probably will not uh, highly unlikely that you will do a good job but of course people learn from mis uh, from mistakes or people learn, learn from experience so uh, somebody may be good at writing uh, patent claims and uh, maybe uh, really uh, do a good job in terms of uh, you know writing so same thing is applicable uh, even for um, say if you have if you are presenting oral presentation so there also you you must do a good job uh, in writing the abstract when you submit it and when you go for your presentation uh, that also you, you should do a good job <clears throat> i mean ultimately we are researchers uh, uh, you don't really have to hide anything uh, unless you have some really groundbreaking uh, result, uh, groundbreaking research done. Uh, then in that case, you file the page, uh, you file the patent, and then let everyone else know, maybe in the form of a publication or presentation or so. So it's just very very uh, important for you to uh, disclose information or uh, see patent. So that is mandatory. But even uh, you know, many a times you go to some Indian conference some conference in India and uh, the student will say, uh, well, I cannot tell you the drug name. Uh, I cannot uh, disclose this, what you have done. So, I mean, that's not uh, really necessary. Um, I mean, uh, you don't have that information. Uh, maybe you haven't done it or uh, maybe you did not get the results and you are just trying to cover it up. So that's not how science grows. That's not how you should be doing. And this is exactly what I keep telling uh, you know, everyone uh, whom, uh, with whom I interact. When it comes to science, uh, of course, the intellectual property is one aspect which you should definitely uh, protect. But when, when it comes to writing manuscripts, when it comes to writing any top technical document, make sure you do a good job in terms of uh, you know uh, writing it uh, religiously without any punctuation mistake, grammatical mistakes, typographical errors, uh, or even the technical content in terms of. Uh, so anything that you take, you must uh, write the reference. Uh, you must cite that particular part. Uh, tables are not supposed to be copied just the way they are in the original publication figures are not supposed to be copied uh, of course there is a whole procedure where you write to the journal asking for the permission to reproduce the figures uh, which may take some time of course i don't think people pay for that i haven't done any i haven't really copied any figure as such in any of my publication not that at least uh, that i don't uh, that i remember of uh, i haven't really done i've written uh, i've drawn my own diagrams but Wherever uh, I have taken the clue from some uh, some publication, I have always mentioned adapted from this particular reference, adapted from that particular reference. Anything could be any uh, anything uh, for that matter, right? Not necessarily only a journal paper or so. So the same thing goes for uh, review articles as well. Uh, if you are writing review articles, uh, I mean I am of the opinion uh, that review articles have to be written by uh, experts. If you are not an expert, you should not write a review article. But uh, because review articles probably that's uh, the easiest in terms of say, undergraduate students and uh, others, uh, very wherein you can uh, you know just compile whatever literature is available, uh, maybe add your own perspectives. But if you do not work in that area for long, uh, you will not know where the field is moving. So if you want to give some perspectives, future perspectives, you will not be able to do a good job because you don't you know very little about uh, that particular field you may have read, read about that field only for the uh, for the uh, you know, review article writing and uh, your uh, review article versus research article you must maintain uh, a particular ratio some people have got so many review articles probably more than their research articles then that uh, actually brings out uh, a question mark on your capability as a researcher so just because it's easy to, uh, for you to uh, kind of you know uh, publish research article uh, review articles that does not mean you should do keep on doing so 
uh, if you look at my own publications, I have got uh, maybe less than 15 out of all these uh, 80, 82 papers, less than 15 uh, review articles. Um, of course, uh, some of them are really good and I'm very proud of uh, proud of that. My first paper, with the first and the most uh, or the highest uh, cited paper um, that, that was published in Journal of Medicinal Chemistry in uh, 20. Uh, 2020, uh, no, not 2020, 2002, 2002. Uh, that is still the, the highest paper, uh, like highest cited paper. Uh, of course, it was long, long time ago, more than 21 years. But again, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, you can always package the information in uh, in the form of a good manuscript or any other technical document. It's just that you have to put your heart and soul in that. Without which, you will not be able to. Um, you know kind of uh, uh, come out with good publications uh, and this is exactly what i uh, wanted to talk about rather than giving the similar presentation some of you might have heard i thought it's a good idea to actually show you a, a paper that we have uh, come out now you see uh, most of these authors uh, like these authors uh, from sandward and in fact uh, number two uh, dr vishwas gaikwad is from uh, krt college only so that's uh, Nasik uh, College only, right? So, 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 what I'm saying is, uh, no matter uh, where you are from, no matter uh, what you do, as long as you do good science, uh, your work can always be published in some good journal. And uh, every journal, meaning every uh, every manuscript is a piece of art. Uh, it's a it's a result of intellectual property. Uh, intellectual contribution and you must uh, do a good justice because doing work is one thing you may do some real cool science but uh, when it comes to presenting it you should be equally uh, you know diligent in uh, doing a good job otherwise that work is just uh, you know uh, will not do a good justice you will not do a good justice to the work that you have already uh, done and this is exactly what i wanted to uh, talk about uh, and with this, I'll just stop. But in case you have uh, questions, please feel free to ask. If there are any questions, you can probably chat or I don't know. Okay, perfect question. Is there any free software for MD simulation and QSR study that can be accepted for good journal publication? Yes, there are plenty of uh, softwares for molecular dynamic simulations. I would recommend Gromax. Now, Gromax typically runs on Linux uh, systems, but now there is uh, there is a, a piece of software uh, you can run in Windows machine. Uh, you can run the Linux uh, Linux program. So there is. Um, you know, if you if you just uh, uh, type in Google uh, install uh, Ubuntu or so, then it will give you all the step by step instruction. The only thing that you should have is uh, the the computational power should be good in terms of the the memory, in terms of um, I would say um, uh, the the processor speed. Yes, so Gromax is there. There are others as well, including Amber, including uh, NMAD. But Gromax is my personal uh, favorite. That's one. Uh, now, as far as QSR studies are concerned, you can you can refer to one um, web page of Dr. Kunal Roy, Professor Kunal Roy. He is in Jadavpur University, so they have written a lot of programs. So he works on QSR studies, uh, particularly related to uh, environmental toxicity or environmental pollution. So he has written a lot of programs, and in addition to that, you can also uh, take a look at Nine. K N I M E, uh, which is uh, Constance Information Miner. Uh, so it is. Uh, there are a lot of uh, machine learning tools available, and it's free. And of course, if, uh, there is a, a Nime uh, Hub. Uh, there is something online. There is. A, it's called Nime Hub because it's open source. So people write a lot of different uh, programs, and then they deposit it on Nime Hub. All you have to do is just uh, download that program, and so Nime works in in a workflow. So it's like uh, pieces of puzzle. Suppose if you want to do regression analysis, so then first you'll have to import the data. So there will be a piece 
uh, piece of puzzle. So import the data as a CSV file. Then the second piece is calculate, meaning uh, you know, clean the data, calculate the descriptors, and then the next piece is uh, actually doing the uh, you know dividing the data into training set, test set, and then actually uh, train the model and use that model or validate that model using a test set or validation set, and then uh, deploy that model for predicting the activity of uh, that particular compound. So Nime is one free software can do a lot of things and you can even write to Kunal, uh, he is very approachable, Dr. Kunal Rai from Jadhupur University, he is amazing and there are various softwares available on his website, uh, DTV lab or something, uh, so you can download and uh, in case there are questions you write to him, he will, uh, his students will guide you uh, in using uh, those softwares appropriately. Okay, how to input the SciFinder study in paper? Okay, uh, okay. Now, uh, SciFinder study in terms you 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 mean the literature, right? I guess uh, literature. Okay, so in fact, uh, uh, in twenty twenty during when the COVID started, uh, we uh, I actually worked on one review article and we, I got it a single author paper got it published in the uh, Journal of Medicinal Chemistry. So now uh, whenever you are uh, doing any uh, sci finder study, say some literature search, it's always a good idea to, so, so you use the keyword. In fact, many of the review articles that I wrote and people write, they will always uh, give the statistics, how many papers are published uh, in one particular uh, area using that keyword or so. The same thing you can also do with the help of PubMed, uh, gives you the, the number of hits and all. So um, I, I assume uh, when you say sci finder study, so you are asking me about the um, uh, about uh, summarizing the literature search part. So you can give it in the form of um, uh, you know you can give it in the form of a visual representation like a, a bar chart or so, or you can even uh, you know write it in the form of a textual information. How many patents? How many uh, conference abstracts? How many papers or publications? Um, if uh, if this is what you wanted to ask uh, Dr. Hemant, otherwise I will, uh, you know, you can write to me separately or call me um, uh, and I'll be able to uh, guide you, uh, you know, appropriate. Is it necessary to give all doc poses images or only target structure doc pose in paper? Well, um, see now what happens is uh, now typically, uh, suppose I've got 10 molecules. Audience, please please wait for five minutes. Sir will join soon. Yeah. Hey, yeah I'm welcome, I'm sir. Already in. Am I audible? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Yeah, there was some issue. I don't know what happened. Probably some internet uh, issue. Okay. So uh, yeah, it is this. I think I have answered this. So you can put representative images, and then uh, rest everything can go in the. Um, the supplementary information. Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions from audience? 
Okay, thank you. I think there is uh, no question, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir, for your valuable knowledge and sharing. Thank you. Uh, sir has shared their own practical experience regarding the writing the research paper and their hidden facts. Def definitely, this will help us to design a very good research paper. Sir has nicely explained each and every section of the research paper, including the ab abstract, the background, material and methods, research schemes, etc. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please kindly accept this certificate as a token of appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Uh, audience, please, sir, uh, please be there for validatory function. Uh, it will be start soon. Yeah, yeah. So I think yeah, the same link or it's a different link, right? Uh, yes, yes. It will be different. Different link okay. will be shared. For okay. Sir has already shared. Uh, I'll just log out and then I'll log in again. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, all the delegates are requested to join for the validity function and the feedback link for the uh, the feedback link and the questionnaire link will be posted after the validity function. Please be there for validity. Uh, now I declare the day three uh, session four is over. Now yeah, all are requested to proceed for validity. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.